Welcome everybody. My name is John Trask. I'm the CEO of Demetra and uh, here to answer a couple questions and provide a brief update to the community. Uh, just want to remind everybody that Demetra never runs airdrops and we only have one official Telegram group. So if you see Demetra running an airdrop, don't click on it. It is not ours and make sure that you have the right telegram group and we'll put some more information in the in the video to direct you to that. So just as a refresher to new community members, I, I want to give an update. What are the platforms that we have? So we are an ag tech solution. We use AI, we use blockchain uh, to, to deliver different components of our platform. Um, we are traded on many exchanges and, and you can find us on CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko to see what exchanges we're traded on. Basically our platforms are, are designed for farmers. Uh, they start with Dimitra Connected Farmer. Dimitra Connected Farmer is uh, designed for farmers. They can load it on their mobile device, uh, Android based mobile device, and it helps them improve their farming. So when a, a farmer logs into Connected Farmer, they essentially create a, a geofence of where their farm is. We start with some satellite analysis and run reports on that farm uh, that help the farmer uh, improve their farming operations. We use our own <clears throat> AI for that. And as we explore different areas of the farm, with questions that we ask the farmer uh, plus the AI, we can give them rec recommendations on how to improve their farming. Connected Farmer, Connected Coffee, and Connected Cacao are three applications. They're all very similar. They're based on the same technology. Within those three applications, we offer cooperatives and governments the ability to run deforestation reports. We also have a separate application that is available to cooperatives and governments to run deforestation reports. And essentially a deforestation report, um, if you strip away the complexity associated with determining deforestation, you're looking at a few key components. Component one is a satellite report which evaluates whether the farmer has deforested within a certain period of time. For the EUDR rules, it's the end of 2020. Uh, many countries have different rules, so the application must consider where the farmer is. And then with that satellite, we use machine learning that we've trained in order to look at the image and determine the level of deforestation, essentially establish is there negligible risk that the farmer has been involved in deforestation or medium risk or high risk? And for the EU law, which is now um, approved and starting in January of this coming year, um, every shipment that goes to the EU must have a deforestation report for specific commodities, coffee, cocoa, soybean, palm oil, cattle, uh, timber and rubber. And on every shipment, this certification must be provided for every farm that's involved in the shipment. That includes if those products are being grown in the EU, which in many cases they're not. So that fits in all three of those applications. We've built uh, APIs for other software companies that can use our deforestation analysis platform, and they can make deforestation reports available within their platform, and they just pay us in, in DMTR, and if they don't pay in DMTR, we do a conversion and um, do that in, in whatever fiat the contract's in. Some of the governments will not do business in, in crypto, uh, so they need a fiat alternative. The second component of deforestation really is the first mile at the farm. We need to evaluate 
the track and trace elements and blockchain fits really well for that. Blockchain fits really well for writing the certificates. So we uh, monitor with the farmer's permission um, and with their input, any shipments that they're making and write that to the Polygon blockchain. And we have a number of projects. We have well over 20 projects right now. And across those projects, they can use um, Ethereum, Polygon. Um, we have many blockchains that we'll write that data to. Um, some governments are, are not interested in uh, specific L1s or L2s um, and set policies where we need to build the platform for them. Um, while others are open to any blockchain. So recently we've done Polygon on projects and, and Komodo on projects, depending on who we're working with. Um, we've worked with other blockchains in the past as well. And then <clears throat> every transaction for a deforestation certificate has a price and that price is paid in DMTR. And like I said, our treasury will make adjustments if somebody is dealing in fiat on any of the specific contracts. And then we have a, a livestock guru product, which is a, a livestock based system. Um, we do animal genetics and it's mainly cattle focused at this point. And, and so um, there's lots of activity going on in the livestock field. And then lastly, we have a bunch of AI tools, which we've built for our own purposes. And like the deforestation API, are building access so that other companies can use our AI and pay us in DMTR. So they'll be able to make a call against our API. Our API will do a calculation on the base information that they provide. It will charge them in, in DMTR. Um, if they're government, again, if it's fiat, if that's their, their preference and provide them with the results that they can publish within their application. We have a number of um, blockchain and software companies that, that use our APIs. And then lastly, um, I think everybody saw last year, we ran a pilot on uh, real world assets, uh, planted a thousand trees in Kenya and sold those as real world assets um, using an NFT. Uh, that went well. We learned a lot of, of what we need to build into the new system, which is launching in May. So there'll be a new program coming out in Kenya. We're doing 10,000 trees at this time. We'll sell individual trees or lots of trees as real world assets. Each investor gets an NFT. That NFT is the key to receiving revenue down the road or the revenue share down the road uh, across those trees and and the connection to the farmer and the app so the farmer goes into our connected farmer app or connected coffee app um, and received a certain number of trees from us some agronomy support some fertilizer uh, training necessary to to make them more effective at using the system and that RWA process then is kicked off. The investor gets a, a couple updates a year on how the tree is doing. And depending on the crop, in the case of avocados, it takes a number of years before an avocado seedling produces an avocado, will receive part of the revenue share. And there'll be a lot more information out on that before the May go live. As I've said during this, the Demetra token is very important. On RWA, um, all the R RWA is bought with Demetra. If it's not bought with Demetra, we'll also be selling on OpenSea and other places. So there'll be opportunity to buy with, with ETH and that would be converted to Demetra. There is a, a buyback done with that product and with that process. So there's a roll up done and a buyback and then there is a certain percentage on each RWA product where we will burn uh, a percentage of the tokens.
So we built a lot of software in the last year. We uh, have really expanded our suite of AI products. Um, we have a dedicated team to AI. We have a dedicated team to mobile. And uh, we will continue building out those products um, over the next year or two. There, there is a, a large area that needs to be analyzed and trained from a machine learning perspective in order to manage all of the farming advice. So again, one of the things I said, we don't, we don't sell to individual farmers. We sell to cooperatives, corporations, and governments. And, and one of the reasons we do that at the moment is that it costs a, a large amount of money to do the analysis um, of an individual region. So if we're selling to a cooperative, we can actually do the analysis of 50 square miles for almost the same price as we could do the analysis of, of one farm. Um, due to the way the, the satellite tiles work and some of the technology constraints. In the future, we may be able to sell to any farm in the world, but today it is only the specific projects that we sign up. And the projects can be of all sizes, uh, maybe hundreds of farms, into thousands and thousands of farms. In Ethiopia, we're, we're starting a training initiative with trainers. We trained a group of trainers last week, and uh, we have to get out and train 500,000 farms. And those farms need help. The, the farmers themselves uh, are a mixed lot. Uh, the majority of them are not highly tech savvy. Um, and you know, as we train, we start to pick out the ones who have that technological capability. They become um, local experts. So when we go into a region and, and we do training, um, then there's somebody on the ground there that can provide additional support. So, you know, in the future, we look at um, expanding that machine learning. It'll take us the rest of this year with the AI team to continue to develop all of the coffee, cocoa, and soy growing regions of the world. And so that's one of our objectives for the machine learning team by the end of this year. That makes it available to everybody in the world um, prior to the, the launch of EUDR in 2025. Uh, we've probably got 25% of the world covered right now, and we'll continue to expand that. Um, that AI team is also working on some disease identification tools. Um, a farmer can take a, a photograph of a, a plant or, um, or a pest and get some identification of what that is. And, and then I think some of you know from previous um, videos or, or previous articles, we do work with Aberfrutus and have identified a citrus canker early warning system and have done work in Papua New Guinea to build out uh, a fall army worm uh, detection system that allows for precision spraying and the reduction of pesticide use. Uh, I'm really proud to say that recently we, we processed the very first EUDR certification um, and we believe this is the first one in the world so it was from uh, a coffee cooperative in Peru called Satanaki and went through um, a buyer and a coffee house in uh, Europe particularly in Germany there's some videos about that and, and we were really excited to be the very first in the world to do this for a crypto company or a non-crypto company and, and we're getting lots of great exposure from that and, and so much interest in the industry. We are talking literally to the biggest players in the, in the coffee and cocoa and chocolate world and uh, looking to secure more contracts in that area. And we have dozens of contracts in that area already. So, you know, our, our goals the rest of this year are um, on the software side, we need to finish out the marketplace. We we did the preliminary development on marketplace and all of the design work on marketplace and 
and shared that with some of our customers. Um, they've given us really good feedback. And so we're continuing to develop that and make adjustments in order to meet the market requirements. We want to get that product right when it goes out. But the, the intent of the marketplace is to help farmers sell their product. And typically they would be selling coffee and, and things like that by the ton. Uh, from a regulatory perspective, if we're helping manage shipping across different borders and regulatory documentation with these farmers, um, our rollout will be um, in the countries that, that we mainly support. And, and then, so the rest of this year, we're going to continue growing the, the team. Um, we're selling into new regions and, and working in new regions. Um, so some great announcements recently on promotions within the company. We continue to grow. Um, we've added a new lead for uh, India and, and South Asia, which is an important market for us. So he'll be um, getting active within the company. And, and we've tried to take some of our leadership and make them more active in communicating with the community. Um, so you may see some of them on Twitter periodically. And I appreciate that they're taking their time in order to do that. Um, to get on to the questions, we have um, a number of question winners, I guess five question winners. And the first one is um, a question about Southeast Asia. So Southeast Asia is a vibrant market. There are many new platforms under development. What do you think about Southeast Asia and do you have plans to grow there? So we're pretty active today in, in Vietnam and Indonesia. We've got projects in India. Um, we have hired a new regional director who's going to run the South Asia region and uh, have a number of projects planned to move forward. So that, you know, just to give you a, a glimpse into that, one of them is in Nepal. So we will be adding uh, some project work in Nepal. We'll be adding some more project work in India. Um, we expect a couple more projects in Indonesia right now. Um, we're planning one of them this morning, which is an RWA project, and we're working out the financials on that. And uh, and I expect we'll see some more activity in, in Singapore and, and other regions. Um, but yeah, great question and very important region for us. Uh, so agriculturally focused. And and if you guys have projects, if you're a, a member of a cooperative and want to put us in touch with your leadership or a large corporation that deals with thousands of farms, please reach out and, and help us with those contacts. So the second question is, how does Demitra ensure that financing provided through NFTs helps boost productivity, empowers farmers to overcome financial constraints, ultimately leading to their economic empowerment? So let me uh, answer that question. I'm going to use the OMA project in Kenya to help answer that. We did a thousand trees uh, or a little over a thousand trees uh, in late 2023. And as we um, sell the NFTs, we take the funds and a lot of the farmers currently grow other crops while many of them have avocados. We first go out to the farm and we do soil sampling tests. We run satellite reports against the farm. We want to make sure that with those two tools, um, we can mitigate as much risk as possible to the limitations of the tools. The soil needs to be good for growing avocados or some of the projects that are coming are acai and, and cacao and, and some other products. The second component is education. We wanna make sure that the farmer is educated and is using the right methods and using the application in order to help them be successful. So we just don't hand them a pile of money. We actually assess the farm and find out, do they have the adequate shade trees if their product requires shade? 
Do they have the adequate windbreak? Do they have um, soil that is prepared properly? Do they have um, the appropriate fertilizers? And do they have the knowledge to be successful? So we have training components that happen and some of those are digital training components and some of those are, are hands-on on the farm. It is really important that we set that farmer up for success. And so Demetra is not just a digital platform. It is a technology platform that uses a lot of technologies and each technology is decided based on the farmer's needs and the project's needs. So blockchain is a component of that, AI is a component of that, NFTs are a component of that. Over time, we continue to work with that farmer. The farmer has reporting requirements if they're receiving an investment to report on the trees that they have sold through the NFT program. And, and so we can assess whether they're doing well or not doing well based on the reporting that they're providing, based on the satellite reports, and based on the periodic sensor readings that we get. That combined with us working in the marketplace really helps them gain from an economic perspective. You know, the, the avocados, typically there, we're getting three times the money on, on an offshore market. Um, so we help the farmer get that $1.50 per kilo um, to make sure that they have the paperwork, to make sure that they have the track and trace that is necessary to clear customs in order to get the increased revenue. And, and in that case, it's creating three times the revenue for the farmer minus a, a little bit from an expenses perspective. Um, but it really gives them an opportunity to grow their business and, and break out of that thousand dollar or two thousand dollar a year business and, and progress towards a, a thirty thousand or fifty thousand dollar a year business um so that is a great question thank you for the question uh alex and the next question comes from commodore what's the situation with the marketplace will it be expanded uh, i, I kind of answered that question before should have prepared more for that but so the marketplace was finished. It went out for testing um, as a beta test. We got the beta test back, um, have learned some things that we need to modify in order to make it um, exactly what we need to, to support those, those customers that um, it's being built for. And uh, so we're doing that right now. Then it'll go out for another round of testing. Will it be expanded? We think the marketplace can be a big product for us. Um, but there are requirements from a marketplace perspective depending on the product and, and we want to be able to handle that. So initially we're working on, you know, coffee and cocoa and, and some of the products that you see us talk a lot about. Um, we've also got some opportunities where we bid on this marketplace with different organizations. So you may see, see things like sugar and, and some other products as well. So thank you for that question. Um, C Dog asked, how can Demetra leverage organics and sustainable farming practices? So every farmer gets to make a decision and, and uh, a, a cooperative that signs up has different objectives and many of their objectives are to grow organically and to grow sustainably. So we build tools and recommendations in. So if somebody gets the application, the first thing we do is we have a bunch of information that helps them decide about the strategies that they want to employ on their farm. And they set their goals within the farm. If they're getting premium money because they're growing organically, if they're getting carbon credits because they're running their farm sustainably, when they set those goals, the app leads them through uh, achieving those goals. And as they enter data and as the growing seasons progress, we help them do that. Um, so there's lots of ways to do that. Some of the projects that we have have clearly defined organic goals. 
And then we help work with the project team on the ground from a coaching perspective, making the appropriate um, fertilizers available, um, helping them manage the decisions around chemicals, helping them manage the decisions around pests. So um, lots of work in that area. And then from a sustainability perspective, we have the deforestation. For this year, it's on our roadmap. We're building out um, carbon credits and uh, we'll be running a program or a pilot fairly soon in the next couple of months in, uh, in Latin America. And then I guess the last question, are there plans to add Demetra to other chains? We are exploring the legal ramifications of, of adding to other chains with, with wrap tokens or uh, making modifications or, or possibly creating a new um, smart contract. We use other chains and we use L2s in order to do some of our transactions, uh, but we want to take that to another level. Um, there are a lot of implications associated with doing that from a, a legality perspective. You know, we look at um, a, a couple right now. So Binance, everybody asked me about Binance and, and we're not listed on Binance. We have applied to Binance and, and hope to be listed on Binance one day. You know, would we put Demetra on Binance chain? If we were listed on Binance, it would make sense to do that for us. Um, and then, you know, some of the other common L2s, like I said before, that, you know, there's a couple that we deal with now and uh, possibly some more that we'll be working with in the next year. Um, and there's two views to that. One is the functionality view and the, the gas cost perspective. And, and then the other one is the trading view. So um, we understand the question. We know why it's important to people that are trading um, and it helps us achieve some of our goals. Um, we have some people that are reviewing that and will make decisions and, and plans on how to do that alongside all of our other development activities for this year. So wait till later in the year and you'll get an update. So I really wanna thank you guys for the questions. We got lots of questions in and uh, thank you guys for the engagement. It's a great community. We're so excited with all of the recent community engagement that we've had. Um, we want to remain transparent and continuously improve. Um, Lots of questions come in on our, our customers. We share what we can. We've produced some videos and there's lots of articles about some of our customers. Some of our customers ask us to sign NDAs and don't want us to discuss their operations. And, and that's one of the reasons we have multiple blockchains. They may be open to blockchain, they're exploring blockchain, but they don't want their transactions out in the world and, and haven't decided to be 100% 100, 100 transparent in their pilots of transforming from traditional cloud technology to blockchain. So we have to ask people to uh, support that. Um, send further questions. I hope to do more of these uh, AMAs as we go. Um, I try to answer questions in, in social media when I'm free to do that. And, and some of the other leaders in the organization, I think have been answering questions, but thank you all for your time today and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon.